read that you were working on a live action Dungeons and Dragons series. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah, uh, with Chris Johnson over E1, um, kind of building out uh, a universe based on a certain segment of uh, that D and D population, and it's a joy. But man, it, it gets deep and and uh, it gets deep right quick. I mean, I love you know I grew up with all that kind of stuff: Dune, Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lion Witch of the Wardrobe. I mean, you, you name the fan Dragonlance were my favorite. You know, uh, I read them when I was in junior high. Um, but the D and D thing's a joy. But it's also a little bit of a, uh, not an experiment, not, not an experiment, but kind of like, okay, like I was saying about World War II movies, I don't want to do, uh, you know, a massive uh, longest day. I want to do, you know, um, a, a tinier uh, sliver of that world. And it's been a, it's been a joy. And in fact, I'm delivering it to him today. <laughs> Oh, the, like a script or an outline? It's a Bible. I mean, I, I we talked last November and he's like, what would you do? And I was like, here's how, here's how I do it. And it was a 12 page treatment of here's the, here's episode one. This is my way into the world. And he came back with, oh, 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 yes. And then we started building that out. And it's the Bible in format that take forever. Um, but it's it's I can't wait for you guys to see it. Yeah, listen, my opinion is that a Dungeons and Dragons live action series, if done right, could be massive, yeah. just massive, especially based on what we've seen with Game of Thrones and the how much in the last decade superheroes and fantasy and everything is permeate, permeate, uh, has gotten into popular culture. Yeah. Um, so I am curious with something like that, because of how many creatures could be in it, dragons, VFX, world building, how much, I mean, this thing could be very expensive. It can, it can be. And that, and I, I, I kind of go defer back to my childhood in respect to in the first Star Wars, you heard about Jabba the Hutt and you don't see him to the third one because you earn at that point and whatever the budget was for the third one compared to the first one, who cares, right? And I think in Dungeons and Dragons, who has this massive, dedicated uh, community of acolytes, it's like, I don't want to suddenly throw everything on the screen. And, and say, here's the buffet. You'd much rather keep the story intimate. You know, when you think of our favorite movies, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's when you think of first, I, I'd rather do the first blood version, you know? It's a, you know, that, it's a guy in the woods being hunted and it's very small, but you allude to the other things through conversation. You have your USS Indianapolis, you see something in the background, you hear a name that 3% of the audience is like, oh, oh I think we're gonna see him soon, you know? Uh, I think the thing is just to take a deep breath, to go into it slowly and to just respect the world. And as you adapt, certain things need to change, but you better not touch the heart and soul of why people love this thing, you know? Do you, obviously they're making a Dungeons and Dragons movie yeah. at, the, at the same time. Do you get to use a title like D&D &D or do you, you have to avoid the title and do something completely different? I, I don't know, you know, right? It's not quite that the, the document is, you know, work in progress. I just call it D and D. Um, but you know, I think the rights are kind of splintered between film and TV. Um, the Hasbro E1 Paramount agreements of it all. And yet I'm like, you want everything to succeed because that's only good for the franchise as a whole, you know. And we've all waited, you know, I'm 46, so most of my life for for a Dungeons and Dragons thing outside of, I'm a huge the PC games, man. they they forged and formed me in the 80s, 90s, and aughts and beyond i played all of those that's how i know the world um but the movies have been questionable at best in the past you know so looking at that you want to do what it is does and if it's this massive spectacle at a quarter billion dollars that does well great because i want my show to exist in a little little subset shadow of it and go deeper and deeper into the underdark you know completely and the other thing is with a series which and, and man listen i watch a lot of movies just like you and um i have recently realize that I, I really enjoyed series so much because it allows people to, you know, you have more time with the character and you have more smaller moments where you can have dialogue scenes where you don't have to have an action set piece, you know, every 15 minutes or, you know, anyway. Like, yeah, I, no, I, I agree. but I agree, but you, you think of your favorite scenes in a movie, like Indiana Jones is a great example in the first Raiders, right? It's him and the swordsman. It's him running away. It's him failing. It's all these little character beats that even the action sequences, everything is a character beat. In TV, you get to pause. And let's be honest, our favorite episodes of our favorite series tend to be the one where they ran out of money. And it's two guys in a room. It's the bottle episode. And they talk and they go deep and they say, you know, 
uh, I am the man who knocks or whatever the classic line is that I can't remember right now from Breaking Bad. Those are your favorite moments. Action's action, you know, and we'll get to that. And it'll be cool. But when a guy says or does a certain thing, uh, that's where TV is, has a strong point, you know? No, completely. Um, are you guys envisioning, one of the other things I really like is, you know, eight and 10 episode seasons because you can have a, you know, contained story, et cetera, et cetera. Are you already envisioning, have you guys had that conversation where you're envisioning it as eight episodes or 10 episodes? You know, the, the Marvel beast of it all in regards to, not the Marvel, I'd say the whole Disney beast of it all with the Mandalorian and with WandaVision and with Falcon Winter Soldier of uh, you can have a half hour live action that sometimes you have them go to 50 minutes or an hour. You know, I, I, I think the last Mandalorian was almost 50 minutes, right? Um, I love that idea of six to eight episodes. I mean, it's been kind of the BBC model for the last 30 years. And yet I also like the breathing room that it doesn't have to be a certain number of pages, a certain number of uh, format length. And let's say you announce six episodes and surprise, we had enough footage for seven. Everyone's happy, right? So I love the six to eight to 10, right? And I, I think that out the gate, you got to figure out what that's going to be. And yet within it, you have the flexibility of time to make it fit, you know? Um, I'm not a, I mean, I'm not a 22 episode guy unless we're doing 10 minute web series. Um, I, I got nothing against procedural, but I like the serialized notion of this isn't just a long movie cut into pieces. It is a serialized show, much like the old radio. And I, I, that's where my excitement lies, you know? Sure. With the Bible that you wrote, is it one of these things where in, it sort of like lays out a vision for five years or seven years or like the overarching story? Or is it one of these things where you're just building the world and explaining the creatures and the races? It can. I mean, but if you were, good, if you were to do that, um, it's, a, it's more than a hundred page document and no one's going to read that. I'm not going to reread it if I wrote it. Um, I think what I'm trying to do is going, look, uh, to everyone out there, you know what this is. Uh, here's the world. Here's the characters. And we're just going to kind of give you an idea. And then here's the first episode. And I think the first episode of any series is the second most important because it's the second episode that gets its talons in you. Everyone will watch the pilot, but are you going to stick with it? Um, and then once I have those, it's like, here's the first season. And then any other time you can go second season and really build it out. But I kind of, I, I stick with macro at this stage in the game because this thing is such important IP. You have to be malleable. And so I will, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to my guns when it comes to the characters and certain aspects of the world. But as to the story, uh, a lot of times, by the time you start shooting, you throw away the Bible going, Hey, it got us here, but now look where we are and you have to rebuild. So honestly, I like that document between uh, this one right now, it's about 40 pages. Um, but it's the one that's internal, the one that you're actually going to send out, it will hopefully be rendered down to the sweetest of the meats, you know? Sure. Did you, th there's so much D and D out there you mentioned Dragonlance. There's so many expansion modules and adventures that have been done. Do you guys have the rights to anything that has been written or is it all you just creating, you know, what you want to do? No, no, no. I, I honestly, when it comes to the rights of things, we're, we're at the nascent stages, stages of this. And once the document is locked, they'll send it to legal and go, you can use this. You can't use that. Yet that, I'm sure. You know, same thing happened with uh, Falcon Winter Soldier characters that, you know, you could use or you couldn't use. Right. Um, and I think with this, it's going to be a matter of, look, everything exists in the background. Uh, you know, this is, you know, where we are is not after the fact, but like, I don't want to go in the middle of the mythos. I want to come near the end where almost where everything is uh, canonical. It's biblical, like it's happened or uh, it's about to happen. You know, that way you can, you can revisit certain uh, sequences and storylines that everyone loved uh, in the past through flashback, but where we go is new. Uh, the unique yet familiar of it all is why we return to the games we love, you know? 